Hi, Misha here, and recently put out a video on the North Korean Type 68 bayonet donated by a viewer. And that whole thing kind of gave me a hankering to just talk about Kalashnikov bayonets again, so I thought I'd line some out. I absolutely don't have every one. I don't know if anyone does. There are probably a hundred variations and sub-variations out there. And each nation had different ones. But these are the, the ones I have. And we'll begin with the original AK-47, AK Type 3, and move all the way through the modern AK-74, AK-74M, ARM-1 from Bulgaria. And these start off known as 6... H or 6X2. You can translate either way, either based on phonetics or the appearance. Running through the 3, the 4, the 5. And of course, there are transitionals, mix and match. And we have some oddities and outliers as well. I don't know. <laughs> Just something I enjoy talking about felt like it this weekend as I record this, so if you would, join with me. And if you'd like to help support us, check out Patreon, like, share, and subscribe. Whatever works for you, it's good for me, too. With that, let's go back in time and talk about how, originally, the AK did not have a bayonet at all, and that's why the 6X slash H2 is kind of a clutched-together mess and well yeah beginning with the first pattern introduced for the AK type 3 in this video I'll be saying 6x instead of h from now on as the gras number just to keep things simple gras was an index of a mill of equipment and some even insist that the original name wasn't even 6X2. Now there was, of course, a 6X1 around 1951. The original AK Type 1, the AK-47, did not have a bayonet lug because, well, the idea by a lot of European militaries at the time, it wouldn't be needed. But already by 1951, when the Type 2 was coming out, the idea was, well, maybe we should stick a bayonet on here. Basically, the SKS had the bayonet, and the AK early on was kind of slotted more into the machine gun, submachine gun role. But as the assault rifle concept started to really catch on, the idea of giving it a bayonet would as well. But the 6X1, while it was put into limited production in trials, 51-52, it didn't succeed, and I really don't know why or how, but, you know, that's kind of the way of things. In 1953, this pattern was first developed and put into limited production for testing. The nearly 8-inch long, thin-grooved, fullered blade was very much taken from the Model 1940 bayonet, the SVT Tokarev bayonet. The grip, on the other hand, was kind of a, frankly, clutched together mess because, again, the AK really didn't have a bayonet lug, so they worked it and came up with this. And it works all right as a bayonet and knife, but that's really about it. And it's a little awkward if you have larger hands, smaller, not so much. Yeah, not the most comfortable you have synthetic grips or scales, blade, and then you had a scabbard that's pressed in with a flange and then a permanently attached hanger with a keeper. As to who made these, <laughs> it's convoluted. This one here does have the Izhesk triangle. But it's also been said that this one does seem to be more of a Bulgarian, at least the scabbard, because it has the rivets, two instead of one, and it has a drain hole 
on the back side as opposed to the front that you find on a Russian. Who knows? It gets a little weird. In fact, some might call this a Romanian bayonet because it seems like some Bulgarians were Romanians and all that, and uh, Hungary, who adopted the AK Type 3s, the AK-55, did not even make bayonets. They seem to obtain some from Bulgaria, Romania, Russia, what have you. But in any case, this is the standard model in mixing and matching of parts. In Russia, these were only made by Ishesk. East Germany, the DDR, would put the AK Type 3, their variant, the um, MPIK, into production around 1958. And they would make a version of the bayonet. Theirs has an actual snap closure. And while it does still have a permanently attached hanger, it's the dual bands style. And the scabbard has the flange, but no drain hole at all. It's little details like that that can, you kind of let you tell these apart. And synthetic grips, although it seems like a lot of times these Germans are kind of a shinier texture. China would also make a version of this bayonet, and theirs could either have synthetic scales or wood. They're one of the few that actually had wood and a few other identifiable features for their scabbard. North Korea would make a version, and there'd be a few debatable. Finland is a good example. I already mentioned Romania. Did Finland make these, or did they put them together? Because Finland did have some actual AKs from Russia. Yeah, kind of hard to know. But one of the more unique ones was Poland. Now the bayonet itself, again, is quite similar. But the scabbard, you notice there's no flange. And a rounded edge. This is actually not made from riveted or welded pieces of sheet steel, but rather it's an extrusion. As far as I know, it's the only nation that did this. And it actually had a removable hanger, so it was replaceable. The other ones more or less did not. So the scabbards on Polish are quite interesting. On the other hand, the bayonet itself, very similar. There's very little variation in the patterns aside from maybe different finishes, different grips. And again, parts were mixed and matched and refurbished and mixed around. So this early on, you could have a bayonet that was a Russian blade, with grips from Poland and a scabbard from East Germany. Who knows? And you can really go down a rabbit hole looking at hanger variations, like this one's stitched versus riveted, and that's actually something that Poland will continue stitching theirs. Uh, it's, it's really fun, but uh, yeah, we, we could be here for two hours, and uh, I don't want that, and you don't want that. But let's talk about the rifles. You knew I had to bring up my Russian transitional AK-2-3. to three. I should point out that while AK Type 1s never left the factory with a bayonet notch and most if not all Type 2s didn't, and even some early Type 3s didn't, by 1955 when the X-1 bayonet was going into full production, they would sometimes go back and retrofit especially Type 2s in Russia, but not always. And it was a pretty simple straightforward thing. They just notched this area under the sight base for the bayonet because it was already there as a cleaning rod, a retainer, even before. And so the bayonet goes on. It's locked in the front, and this split ring goes around the edge of the gas block in the back. And because the blade is relatively long, I mean, 8 inches, it sticks out reasonably far. It's not super heavy. One fun fact... They typically only issued, at least in Russia, a bayonet for a fixed-stocked AK and not a folding AKS. Although, folders still had lugs, as far as I know. They just didn't typically issue the bayonets with it. And here are the other two on their respective rifles. Well, at least the Polish. I should also mention that while Poland would switch away from the milled AK by 1964-65, going to the AKM, 
they would actually continue using some of these grenade launchers until the early 70s. And so there was a second production run of milled type bayonets in the early 70s. And there are some small differences between the ones made late 50s, early 60s, and the ones made in the final run in the 70s. That's kind of getting more into the weeds again. And while I would love to have an East German build, I don't just have the bayonet. So I decided to stick it on a Hungarian AK-55 build because, again, Hungary didn't actually make their bayonets for their milk guns anyway. So either they just didn't really issue them or they just acquired them either from Bulgaria or Russia. The thing is, Bulgaria did not actually adopt the AK until 1958. Eh, it's a whole thing. Who knows? Then again, Russia used other nations to produce for them and sell for them for their own political reasons. But yeah, the first generation, the 6X2 or the 6H2 if you prefer. Either one is correct, frankly, or not correct equally. But this bayonet, well... It was a little spendy to produce on one thing. It didn't really serve any other purpose except being a bayonet or at most a knife. And, well, its attachment wasn't the strongest in the world. It really was literally retrofit to the design. But when the AKM would come along, they would really put more importance on the stabby pokey thing the AKM type 1 bayonet the 6x3 and this is a Romanian example they were one of I believe five nations that produced these also of course Russia where it started in 1959 with the AKM and East Germany Poland and Hungary so Hungary is finally producing this type of bayonet. But what's unique about the Romanian, aside from the very early versions that used the standard clip-on hanger, they did this wraparound affair that buttoned in the front here. Otherwise, though, aside from a different hanger accessory, the same as Russian. With this bayonet and scabbard set, Russia really set out to address the issues. You have this two-piece, you know, bolted on, wrap-around grip. Very bulbous there for gripping. You even have a retention strap for using as a knife for fighting. The blade itself has saw teeth on the bottom. Yeah, they're not great, but better than none. You have kind of a clip point or bowie tip, a little bit of a hook. It's a shorter but wider blade, so it can be used for more purposes. And of course, very famously, it has the hole in the middle, the window to lock here to make it into a wire cutter. You know this, I know, but we gotta talk about it, right? Just fit them together and clip wires. Also, quite famously, it's supposed to be insulated to cut electrical wiring fencing with this rubber piece under here and this grip is the synthetic material again it's screw derivative on the idea was everything could be replaced and was corrosion resistant this blade was a type of treated stainless steel scabbard being steel and things like this insulator could easily be replaced the belt hanger could be replaced the hand strap could be replaced and of course it actually used a standard bayonet lug designed expressly for the purpose again introduced in 1959 this pattern the 6x Three would be produced until 1965. Then you would start to get into some transitionals. And here's one. This style is the same bayonet. This one does have the hanger I was talking about, much more common. That clips on 
easily to remove if you wanted to pop it off your belt. But it has the later synthetic scabbard, often called Bakelite, the AG4 material. This scabbard would appear in the mid-60s. So you would see the original style bayonet stuffed into the later scabbard. And this was done by Soviet Russia and also East Germany, which I'm pretty sure this is an East German example. As you can see, the blade and has a dark, shiny grip compared to the Romanian. And of course, like I said, the scabbard. No need for a rubber insulator when you have a synthetic scabbard. Hanger. All that. And here's East German MPI KM. I got we've covered quite a bit recently. And the dedicated lug under the gas block here for this here bayonet. And it is a very secure mount. Ring in the front, very large lug in the back. The only down thing is, it is a little, you have to get it lined up just right. Once it goes, it goes, but this is one that you might run into issues, with, especially with some other variations. This big bulge back here might intersect things, but you can see what they're going for. This is a purpose built. Now it does give a slightly shorter reach compared with the original because of the blade but in other ways this means you could carry a knife in fact within the soviet red army they didn't often issue utility knives or other types of knives so this is typically if soldiers had a knife what they would have and just because here's the romanian on my sar1 the pm63 clone while more nations made these and some other variations, and while they were in production for six years, give or take, you don't often come across the 6X3. That's because while it was good, it wasn't great. They, they could do better. So already by 1962, 63, they were working on it in Russia. It would actually be the next bayonet, they would really take the world by storm, and I believe is the most produced AK bayonet, the 6X4. And just as we have a transitional combination, this scabbard is what was called a 6X, 6X4 scabbard, we'll have transitions here too, but in the other direction. Here we have a 6X4 bayonet, but shipped with a 6x3 steel scabbard with insulator. And this one is actually, as far as I can tell, Egyptian. You had Egypt, who only made this style. Then you had Poland and Romania, who each had made the original 6x3, but also would progress on. And so those two were making them as kind of a stepping stone, but I think it's interesting that Egypt only did this style. Here's the hanger. The Egyptians uh, tend to be a little coarser in their paint and their glue. And that's actually a feature of this here bayonet. The blade is virtually unchanged. And these could either have synthetic or canvas hand straps. This one always likes to pop off. But the difference is here in the grips. These, for one thing, are actually glued in place. But also, the pommel. It's a steel piece. Originally, a machined or forged piece. And it's said that's because... Soldiers are using the synthetic butt of the 6X3 as a hammer. But also, being smaller like this, I frankly just find these easier to stick on a gun. So yeah, the difference is primarily the grip. 
at least for these transitional ones made in uh, Egypt, Romania, and Poland. Russia actually never shipped this style, this combination. Here's the Polish variant. Notice a much cleaner grip install. For whatever reason, the Egyptians tended to be very generous with their glue. <laughs> smoother paint uh, sorry this one's missing the hanger and uh, the polish hanger is actually stitched not riveted so i haven't uh, come across one yet i don't think this one is yeah see the rivets on there your uh, polish would actually be stitched together so at first otherwise this looks the same but there's something unique to polish bayonets do you see it They do not have the saw teeth on the underside. This is true for their 6X3 they made, as well as their 6X4. Because typically the designation is more for the bayonet than the scabbard itself. Yeah, just one of those unique things that Poland did. I find it cool anyway. I like transitional stuff though. And here they are on appropriate rifles. Egyptian Mahdi Mr. ARM for this bayonet. And my earlier Polish build for the transitional 6x4 3 combo. Kind of seem fitting since this gun itself is a, is a little bit of a transitional, mostly AKM, but then it has a muzzle nut, a blued finish. Yeah, I don't know. Bayonet collecting is pretty fun. So what do you think so far? And with that, let's move in to the full 6x4 production and really look all the nations that manufactured it and some variations therein. So we come to really the bayonet, including this orangish Bakelite color made in Russia. This one, of course, is my Ushesk. These are also produced by Tula, who also made the 6X3, but not the 6X2. And there are actually three variations of production in Russia. The 6X4 pattern was introduced in 1965. As we've already discussed, there's transitions, and some nations only made transitionals. And while Russia would stick scabbards and bayonets together, they obviously would go to this. This scabbard is a lot better insulated, and frankly, probably just easier to produce, saving on steel except for the tip. And uh, the whole assembly of the grip is easier as well. This is one of the refurbished ones with the kind of blackened blade. Originally these would have been the same color, the shiny. The first pattern produced from 65 to 71 had machined parts, namely the ring and the pommel. They were getting in 72, right at the same time they started putting cast parts in a lot of their AKMs. They would also go to a cast pommel and cast ring up here. These would all be made by Tula and Ichesk. And then from 83 to 86, the final run would be exactly the same, except they would go to a simplified cast pommel. Which, as far as I know, those are only made by Ichesk. And as you can tell by the dates, these were originally introduced for use with the AKM. Yeah, this is just a look, and this is my Legion AKM build. And actually, this bayonet came with this gun, so it fits very well. It's just period correct appropriate for an early 70s gun. I guess you'd really say it's iconic, and... At least seven nations manufactured the 6X4, the full version. 
So let's look at a couple of variants. Here we bring in one we haven't discussed yet, Yugoslavia. Yeah, this was the first version they made. And they typically are black, relatively shiny. They never made a 6X3. Their hangers are a little unique with the rivet pattern. Serial numbers, all that stuff. And here it is out, you can see the shiny blade, steel pommel. But what's interesting, this was originally made not for a stamped gun, but a milled. Here's the first pattern, Yugoslavian M70, second pattern overall, the M64 coming first with this style of milled receiver. But note the AKM-esque bayonet lug rather than AK-47 for this type of bayonet. And here it is on the firearm. Of course, this bayonet would continue in production by Zestava or a subcontractor, I'm sure, for the stamped AK, like the M70, AB2, the M70B1, and really was the only version they did. Iraq, who had close ties with Yugoslavia, would also produce a version of this bayonet. And another interesting variant with a very distinctive difference came from China. Here is their take on the 6X4. And you'll notice something's missing from the scabbard. You also will notice a very unique metal belt hanger clip as well, which uh, frankly doesn't work too great. It uh, kind of wants to fold over on you. So what's going on here? The blade is almost the same. And like a polish, it does not have teeth saw back, but also doesn't have the small window for the wire cutter. And the unique hanger again. Now these do not seem to have been used on Chinese army guns. They had their fixed or clamp-on folding spike bayonets for their Type 56s, milled or stamped. But it was used on export guns and commercial guns. I've also seen some assert that this was used on their copy, unlicensed as it was, of the SVD Dragunov. But I don't know how substantiated that really is. Cool bayonet though, and this one actually is serial matched to this rifle. My Clico AKS which is essentially a semi-automatic version of a Type 56-3. Whole story behind these and their side folding counterparts. And the, the AKM style lug on a Chinese gun is pretty uncommon here. If we had a bayonet lug, it was typically the Type 1, even for the stamped imports. Or we got the underfolding spike bayonet. So pretty cool, I think. Synthetics. The Bakelite to match the color. But it's a cool variation. And I wanted to start here with the 6X4 on these guns because they're all 76239. That's because often this style of bayonet is more closely associated with the AK-74 first put into limited production in 1973 and full production by 1977, 78 in Russia and a few other nations besides. But obviously the 6X4 came out years before that, so originally was associated with the AKM, but would be inherited by its successor. So let's continue on looking at other nations that made this.
Here we have a Bulgarian 6x4. They did not make a 6x3 because they never made an AKM. But they did definitely made an AK74 as we talked about in a recent video. And so they started producing bayonets for it. And a 6x3 would not fit a 74 because of the big bulbous butt. And some nations would modify their bayonets to work. Obviously, this is very close to Russian. Although, it does have the classic Circle 10 marking on the grip. A little bit more of a matte finish on the blade as well. There it is on the grip. Has This one at least has leather. Leather hanger to rivet. And just to be completionist, here's the wire cutter for this version. It does seem like this version is a tighter fit as well. And I have to say, if I were cutting an electric fence, having this to grip onto and this would inspire me with more confidence in the previous version. I, sh I should also say, due to the internal construction, the, uh, the grip is more insulated. There's actually not a direct connection between the metal of the blade and the hilt, so electricity sh should not come through it. And of course, you have a lot more gripping surface here, and you don't have to worry about replacing the rubber insulators. It wears out or rots. Just a uh, very solid and very popular bayonet. Moving on, Romania did a 6 x Three, and they did a transitional and they did a full 6x4 as you see here although I think these are considered uh, relatively uncommon especially with this hybrid canvas and leather hanger I've only seen a couple over the years this one came in with one of the Wassers years ago doesn't have the uh, hand strap but that's okay there it is i'm assuming this is cast but i might be wrong it's it's definitely a chunkier ring there's the hilt the hanger what's kind of interesting about these romanians even though they use their belt hangers except for the very earliest they still have the spot For a traditional belt hanger if desired yeah pretty cool and of course while these would fit a lot of their guns they were primarily intended for their PA 86 their 545 version so here they are on their correct guns I always thought the 74 bayonet the way it mounted to the 74 muzzle brake just looked cool it also gave it a little bit more reach than on the akm for rather obvious reasons and here this is on my sar2 and what's interesting about the way this mounts look where the lug is on the bulgarian here and on the Romanian here, it's a little further forward because this muzzle brake is slightly longer and skinnier. And some of the older Romanians won't fit, so you do need this pattern of hilt. The bulbous one absolutely won't fit. In fact, usually they don't on the 74s anyway. But correct style for this and these go together very well, and I think they're just super cool. Now, East Germany also produced a 6x4, but I don't have an East German 74 or an East German 6x4 pure bayonet, so oh well. Just how life goes. We already talked about Yugoslavia, China. Hungary did not, interestingly. And, you know, it's time 
to kind of get into some of the oddballs before we wrap up with the most modern version before the collapse of the USSR or the Warsaw Pact, which was the 6X5. But yeah, before then, let's talk about the weird ones, the, the outliers. The not even exactly AK bayonets, perhaps. How about that? For our first weirdo or oddity, we have the Polish WZ85 fencing or practice bayonet. I actually did a full video on this when I picked it up years ago. Now, Poland made the 6X3 and they did the 6x4 but with the older scabbard and you can see they use essentially the same kind of rubber for here and here the tip and their grip scale colors were a whole range for their bayonets and of course this practice bayonet here so you've got rubber and you've got a latch here. Yeah, it's about as safe as safe can be. Obviously no blade to it. But uh, good for practicing and kind of a cool piece. And it does fit on a real rifle. Here it is on the tantal. Notice very similar polymer. And you can put it on retracted and stick it out. It even seems to have a serial on the back here. And obviously no scabbard. Now when they would start making bayonets for the WZ96 Burial, they would go to a black plastic version. But overall, they would keep on using the 6X4 and that pattern, up until this present day, at least if they issue a bayonet, which, you know, a lot of newer militaries do not. But it's a unique AK, and it will fit most guns out there. Next, we have the one that actually inspired me to do this full-length video, the North Korean Type 68 bayonet. North Korea made a standard AK Type 3, a 6X2 pattern, but when it came for time for their stamped iteration, they did this guy. And it's pretty different. We went into depth already. One thing I want to point out in this video that I didn't point out in that one, I've mentioned that the scabbard felt kind of thinner. And it is. If you notice, there's a seam here. Much like they did for parts of their rifle, like say the gas tube, this is actually just a sheet of steel rolled over and affixed together on itself. No drain hole either. And this is the green hanger variant. And here it is out of the scabbard with its unique blade that combines both ring and then an AKM essentially almost the same as a 6x4 but but not quite and then grip scales of course the hanger is permanently attached with the band system like we've seen in others but yeah it is definitely thinner which makes sense for what this is. And they would they would produce these for at least 20 years. And here it is again on the rifle. Pretty neat. And just once more, thanks to Robert for donating this. First for the original video on it too. And uh, kind of for inspiring this one as well. Bandits are pretty cool. As far as I know, North Korea was the only one to kind of do this hybrid design, but I could be wrong. 
But with that, let's move kind of further away from standard Kalashnikov, although staying within the Warsaw Pact, the comm block. The only nation not to officially adopt and use some version of the Kalashnikov within the Warsaw Pact was Czechoslovakia. Although they would, of course, adopt the 760 by 39 cartridge, they never would the 545. The VZ-58 that they would use, of course, would, is, would be its own gun. And it would have its own unique bayonet and bayonet mounting system. And here we have two bayonets, one early style, one late style. Would you believe that VZ-58 was adopted in 1958, although production did not begin until 1959, and it was built for a quarter century, ending in 1984. Quite a successful design, and it was also exported to a number of nations, including Cuba. Its bayonet was in a leather scabbard, although there was a nylon version issued in limited numbers, for NBC guys, but yeah, the leather scabbard. These are both kind of the smooth style. I've also had some pebble grainy ones, and the early ones didn't have riveting holding the belt loop. But of course, scabbards were like this, where it's a very simple light scabbard and a very simple light bayonet because for whatever reason, the Czech military, the powers that be, were very concerned about weight with the VZ-58 in its kit, which is why it has alloy mags. The gun itself is actually lighter than an AKM, even though it's a milled receiver, and that would extend to its bayonet. Early, late. Now the blades themselves really didn't seem to change much. And there's definitely some inspiration from the original AK here, but I think it's mostly just the need for a lightweight blade. The original style here had a wraparound on the bottom, single piece wood grip, beech wood. They would only make these for a couple of years. And uh, then go over to the synthetic. Note the what's called the short tang back here and the pretty flush cross guard yeah not really that useful is anything to stab with because there's not really much to keep your hand but then again the idea was weight also note that the butt of the bayonet is part of the wood now uh, Soon after they went to the synthetic, the so-called beaver barf furniture for the rifles, they would also do the bayonets. And originally, the two halves would be glued together in this same pattern. But then they start making changes. Now, they would change the way they were attached, riveted. There's some with three, some with one. But this kind of dual seems to be the standard styling. And sometime, I think late 60s, early 70s, they extended the cross guard just a bit to give a bit of a lip there. And later on, 70s, mid to late, they actually extended out the tang. And that's because this part was breaking, especially with the synthetic grips that were glued together. So they extended that out so that the scales wouldn't take an impact. But of course, once they did that, they could not be glued together. So they're just separate scales at this point. So I guess technically this is a slightly heavier bayonet compared with this, but yeah. And this style here, of course the color of the beaver barf would change just based you know, on the consistency. But if you notice, there's not a ring 
And there's this very interesting stud up here. And the way it attaches, pretty unique. Here is a CSA, formerly D-Technic gun, with the intact lug here. And what you do is you actually come from behind and slide forward. You honestly have to start it pretty far back because this is a pretty long lug. And then it clicks forward with the blade really almost flush with the muzzle nut. I often wondered just how strong it was. I guess that's why there's such a long channel and locking surface because stabbing in you're pushing back on the direction it comes from. I also have to wonder if one reason these were breaking back here. I know it's the soldiers are using it as a hammer and I believe it. But I also said it wonder sometimes that they were stuck going on. If the soldiers were not kind of hammering the rear to lock it onto the gun. Just a little speculation I had there. And of course, with the extended cross guard, this was a better fighting knife or even throwing knife. I could honestly see this as a pretty good throwing knife, still being lightweight and still keeping with the aesthetic of the VZ58, a, a, a platform, a system that I honestly greatly admire. And apparently, so did those in our next nation. We move from the VZ-58's bayonet to something that it directly inspired. Finland's RK-62, or model 1962, the Valmet bayonet. A bit of an interesting connection, but I think you'll figure it out. I can get it out here. And this one is actually one of the easiest ones to pull out of the scabbard. There's not even a retaining loop. We've already referenced Finland because they had some Kalashnikovs, which they designated as the RK-54. And it does seem like while Finland absolutely refurbished and even modified AK Type 3 bayonets, I just I don't know that they made them. But they didn't make this. Now, they had experimented with blade bayonets for the M39 bolt action. But they definitely took this, including its mounting system. And they kind of combined it with a utility knife, almost like a fisherman's knife or a puka type knife. And these were produced by Fiskers and Hackman. And they actually came with a phosphated, a parkerized blade. But it actually has a bit of an edge to it from the factory. And a bit of a tip. <laughs> That's pretty unusual for bayonets. Which really shows you this was expected to be more of a utility knife first and foremost. And we have synthetic scales here. The material is interesting. It's kind of a soft, pliable plastic. And what I think is also odd is the press stud, the latch, is in the middle of the grip. And you'd think that would make it uncomfortable to use. And not really with the right hand, the way your hand falls. If anything, it's actually useful because it keeps you, it gives you something to purchase on. Because without it, there's not a cross guard at all. So at least it gives you something. Now on the left hand, it can be a little more problematic, although you can still put it between your fingers. Yeah, there's not a lot of grip there. It's pretty straight, I'm going to be honest with you. And the scabbard, there's several variations, is made of leather, some say reindeer hide, and... There are various rivet patterns, different numbers of rivets, a belt hanger, and most, if not all, are this green 
hard shell type. And actually what locks it in is a little depression in there where it works in conjunction with the stud. And it stays in better than you would think. You can hear it kind of latch. It's got some play. But it takes a bit to wiggle it out. Now it can, as we just saw. So I find that a little interesting. That they didn't put some way of securing it. It does have a hole. No. Oh well. Pretty cool. And like I said, its mounting system very much inspired by the VZ. Very similar concept of having a long lug under the flash hider in this case, which is pinned on. But whereas with the VZ you come from behind and slide it forward, I think they made an improvement of putting this on from the front and sliding it back in a more conventional, traditional manner. And there it is. Kind of comes back a little far, but lines up again with the prongs of the hider sticking out here. Notice that it's an unfullered, ungrooved blade. And the press studs in the middle. It just slides off. I can get it here one-handed. This isn't really the angle they expect you to do this at. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. It fits fine. And they would continue to use this exact pattern of bayonet throughout the RK-62, RK-6276, which the military used, as well as models they didn't use, like the M-71. Heck, it would even fit the M-78 LMG. Just because of the using the same flash hider. And of course, Finland would also use, or at least have in their inventory, some East German and Chinese Kalashnikovs that were sold off cheap to them surplus, and they would use their own bayonets. And as always, there would be some older ones in the inventory. But yeah, this was the primary model that they had, and really it changed very little over about a 20-year production run with those two makers. And with that, I believe that kind of concludes the major oddballs that I happen to have. So, let's go all the way back to the Soviet Union, middle of the Afghanistan War, around 1986, for our final major model. And now we come to the 6X5, produced in Russia, of course, and Bulgaria. Although, really, Bulgaria just made the last pattern. There are, are three, four variants. This was initially introduced in 1986 and was made of the same quote-unquote plum color nylon type plastic pa6 type it wouldn't actually go to the true black until around 1991 and the initial version would lack the wire cutter well it had one but it was weird using the tip then the next version would go to larger finger grooves then the third version 1988-89 would go to this style here so we start back with the 6x4, this is Bulgarian, just like this one, because the Russians are quite hard to find. But of course, this has the metal pommel, and this is going back to the one-piece grip, <clears throat> kind of like we saw with the 6x3. But this is a much different polymer than this, and again, it's the slimmer style. And they also got rid of the hand loop. The X3 and the X4 had the strap or the hand loop, so it could be used as a fighting knife or utility knife. But these are relatively slick, slippery grips. This did not have it, because it was felt that the textured 
ribbed and slightly finger groove grip would be enough that it just wouldn't be necessary. That he also very much changed the blade. This pattern had been in use since the 6x3 all the way through the transitionals to the 6x4 with not a lot of changes aside from things like the polish. But now we are using a very different style. It has these like two parts together with the edge. It's more of a straight point. It does have the saw teeth. Like I said, originally it would not have had the window, but that was only for the first year or so of production. Then they would restore the wire cutter. It has more of a kind of matte, more modern texture. And it's longer. If you put them side by side, you can see it's basically a half inch longer give or take although it is a little more narrow and of course that would mean the scabbard well at first it might look the same it's a little bit longer as well So the 6x5 bayonet will not fit in the older 6x3 or 6x4 scabbards. However, the older design will actually fit in this one. It's wide enough for it. But the reverse is just not possible. The different shape, it's wider on the edge there yeah just isn't anywho so this was the new standard by the 1990s and it's often called the ak-74 bayonet but i don't really like that name because a lot of nations that did use the 74 never had this bayonet and bulgaria and russia that did make it actually ended up using it on different models. Russia would use it more with the AK-74M than the original AK-74. And Bulgaria, well, they had their own model to use it with. They would issue it and sell it with a lot of their newer designs, like the ARM-9 here. Or even some of the ARM1s that had the AKM, AK-74 style lug instead of the AK Type 3. But again, theirs weren't in the plum. They were always the true black. And the Russian ones are very hard to find in the U.S. Especially the early variations. This one has a leather or faux leather hanger clips on there are arsenal versions with a nylon canvas hanger as well the scabbards made out of the same modern polymer and the wire cutter on the end is pretty much what you'd expect of course this says the circle 10 the Russian version would have the Izhmash logo. Tula would not build these because uh, Tula was out of business by the 1990s. I uh, picked up this bayonet a very, very long time ago from Kvar when they were selling them as, uh, as new. Also, the press stud on these is smooth with the protective edge. In some ways, it's a simplified bayonet, but pretty cool. In Bulgaria, these are still being manufactured as far as I know, certainly still being issued. And in Russia, while there have been newer models introduced in recent years, 
There are a ton of these still in Russian service. Heck, there are a ton of 6X4s still being passed around. So I'm sure we'll see this style for years to come. I should also say that this isn't really like replaceable. This is manufactured, the grip, with the blade and tang, and it's essentially fixed together. So if it were to break, that's kind of it. I guess theoretically there are, there are those that might be able to replace it, but realistically... It's kind of a disposable thing. If you break the grip, it just gets chunked. But this seems like it'd be a very durable gr uh, blade, too. It's got a reasonably pointy point on it. It's not the kind of hooked or bowie type anymore. The saw teeth might be slightly more usable. They extend around a little more than the previous versions. And yeah, it's definitely a different material, different type of steel. Much more of a matte finish. And yeah, just a little bit, a little bit longer. And so that was the last version, although the early variations done in the Soviet Union. And since that time, while plenty of AK bayonets have been used in Germany, after reunification, they re re recycled some for the G36. That's kind of it. After this, you don't really see new AK bayonet variations. Not en masse, anyway. Like I said, Poland would continue to issue them with the burial, but it was kind of the same pattern, just with a black grip, and that's about the most you see, is sometimes more modern colors or more modern material. But if anyone's still making a bayonet, it tends to be of the traditional pattern. China has all but stopped AK production. There were a few outliers like India, Indonesia, Vietnam that made some bayonets, but they're not really widely available in America. And with some of them, there's a bit of a, a, a debate of over, you know, what they are. Hungary really just kept on making that one pattern because for the most part... They didn't seem like they issued a lot of bayonets. Only at the very end of their production run in the 80s do you see some coloration in the grips and some minor updates for the AK-63. But uh, you said that one style for the AKM-63 that they had done before. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything else, but uh, I think that's all we kind of came here for. Just kind of left this on the table since... Uh, I need to see the transition, how Bulgaria copied this. And the orangey color. Kind of a pebble grain faux leather. But that's it, guys, from the experimental 6X1 through what is still technically the modern day 6X5 and some oddballs in between. With that, please do like, share, subscribe, and uh, let's wrap it up. And there we have it, ending where we began. We've gone through them all, looking at Russia, Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, China, and a few others besides. I'm curious, what's your favorite style? Which odd Kalashnikov bayonets do you own? Let's discuss in the comments. These are just fun. Most of these I picked up back when the Wassers were coming in and they were just shipping with free bayonets. Others came with kits over the years. A few more recently I have picked up, like the East Germans. And as I said at the beginning, a couple have been donated or given or traded to me like the North Korean. I really do enjoy bayonets. I don't go out of my way, but they're a fun thing to collect, a neat little cool accessory, and uh, shockingly well made considering how mass produced they were. And there are people that just collect bayonets, not firearms, but just their bayonets, and that's cool as well. But yeah, love to discuss them below. Love to hear about your interesting variations and flavors and finds. 
because there are a ton of them. As you could, please like, share, and subscribe, and catch you very soon next time.